Okay, so here we are in the Aspire interface. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is create a new file. For the job size, um, it's gonna vary depending on which machine you have. If you have the i2R4, your width is gonna be 24 inches. Your height is gonna be 24 inches. i2R6, width is still 24, but your height is 36 inches. And the i2R8 are these dimensions because that's what I'm gonna be cutting. Uh, and that is 24 by 48 inches. Thickness doesn't matter too much for this cut because we are doing material touch off, which is also the machine bed. So I just put in 0.5 just to have something there. And for the Z0 position, you wanna make sure you're doing material surface. Double check XY datum position. Touch off from the center, you could touch off from the corner, but it's a lot easier to touch off from the center just because with the corner, the MDF is curved, so finding the exact corner isn't as easy as just finding the center of the machine. So press OK, it's gonna create this just standard two by four rectangle, and of course that's gonna change depending on your machine. All you have to do to create the vector for this is go over to the draw rectangle section, click on that, have your anchor point be 0, 0, and then you just input the dimensions of your machine. So for me, the width is 24 and the height is 48. And if you have an eight, it's gonna be the same thing. And then likewise for all the dimensions I gave for the other sized machines. So press create. It's gonna look like it didn't do anything. Uh, it did create a vector, it's just on the same line as this outline over here, so don't click create again, otherwise you'll make a second vector. Uh, press close, then with your mouse you can come over and click on that border, you'll see a purple pinkish dotted line. That's gonna tell you that a vector line is there, that's what you wanna see. So that's all you have to do for the vectors, very simple. Now you're gonna go over to tool paths. First one you're gonna make is a pocketing tool path, so click on that. Uh, my settings are already input, but I'll go through them all. Start depth, don't worry about that. You don't want to affect that. That should stay at 0.0. .0. Cut depth, I have it at 0 0.005 inches. That is essentially the maximum amount of depth you would want to take off for a surfacing pass. You can do less. 0 0.005 is pretty good just to ensure that you're gonna hit every point of your machine, because let's say you touch off from the center and another spot is a little bit lower than the center is on the z-axis by more than 0 0.001 or 0 0.002, whatever you put in, you're not gonna actually hit that and it's not gonna be fully surfaced. So 0 0.005 kind of gives you the leeway that you need in order to make sure you're hitting every point in the machine. The tools that we're using today is a uh, surfacing tool. It's a 1.5 inch diameter surfacing tool by Amana. And to check the settings, you'll find varying things and depending on your machine, you should only push it so far. So I was surfacing the I2R B series, which is a two horsepower spindle, which you may be able to push a little bit harder than the one horsepower spindle. Um, so because of that, I have a pass depth of 0 0.005. So I'm doing the cut depth in one pass, which is gonna save me a lot of time. Spindle speed, you're gonna to wanna to have it at around 24,000 RPM. Feed rate is where it's really gonna differ between the one horsepower and the two horsepower. Since I'm doing the two horsepower, I'm going at it with about 1200 millimeters per minute. The one horsepower, I would recommend only hovering around 900 millimeters per minute. And you can always adjust this in UCCNC during the cut. Step over, you can do about 30% and get away pretty cleanly. Other than that, this is looking pretty good, so we'll press OK. Um, then just to double check, you should have it on raster rather than offset. Raster is gonna go back and forth. Offset is gonna be circular from the middle. And then you're gonna notice down here it says profile pass. So that's gonna add an outline pass of the profile of your pocket. So instead of going side to side the whole way up, it's going to do an outline pass that kind of gives a boundary for your 
side to side passes to live within. Um, and it just kind of makes for a cleaner cut. So do this drop down menu. The default is no profile pass, but I have it on first. So do that just to make a bit cleaner of a cut. And then this is really important for the surfacing tool, the ramp plunge moves. Make sure that's checked because typically it's unchecked, so check it. And then the distance should be one inch about. That just means that the uh, plunge is occurring over the distance of one inch. So the more distance, the kind of easier it's getting plunged into the material and the less stress it's gonna put on the tool. Even though it's only going down 0 0.005 inches for this tool that is kind of a big ask to do just in one go. Um, other than that, you can name it if you'd like. So we could do Amana Surfacing 1.5 inch and then Pocket 1 works. So then we will calculate that. And it should look something like this. If it doesn't look like this, uh, probably rewind the video and make sure that you have all your settings in place. Uh, close out of the preview because we don't need that right now. So now we'll go back into 2D view, uh, uncheck that to make it less confusing. And then with the vector outline still selected, make sure you have the dotted line. Uh, you're going to want to go to profile pass. Pretty much same settings as before. We're using the surfacing tool 1.5 inches. You can pull that up, make sure your pass depth is good, make sure your spindle speed is set, and make sure your feed rate is good for whichever machine you have. Uh, press OK. Now cut depth, you need to make sure that is the same as your pocketing pass. Otherwise it will not be a level machine. It will be the difference of whatever the two numbers are. And the reason we have to do a profile is because when you do the pocket, it's cutting within the boundaries of the vector uh, and since it's such a wide diameter bit it's going to leave a pretty sizable lip on the actual vector itself uh, so this profiling pass will kind of go in and clean up the edges and you'll know what i mean when you see the video so that's why you want to make sure that the machine vectors have it clicked to on typically you would do like outside right if you were cutting out a project but for this you're going to want to make sure that it's on if it's outside right then you're probably going to go beyond the machine limits and if it's inside left then you're just going to be essentially going over what the pocketing pass already did um so don't worry about separate last pass or tabs for this but what you do want to do is add a ramp uh, same reason as before with the pocketing pass. So zigzag works for this, distance of one inch again. And that's all looking good. We can label this Amana surfacing 1.5 inch. And there it is, calculate. And if you go to preview, which, you know, again, you don't really have to do, but you can preview all tool paths. You'll see that it's going up and then it goes around. So since both of these are the same tool with the same settings, you can actually just click both of these to make sure they're visible. Then you go over to save tool path. Uh, double check just to make sure that you have this selected, visible tool paths to one file. And then tool paths to be saved, make sure, yep, those are good. Now the post processor, you're going to want to make sure it's Mach 2 thirds arcs millimeter. That's what you need for the I2R machines. Okay, and then you're going to press save toolpath. That's going to open up your folder window. Uh, I have mine saved already, but I can just kind of explain what I labeled it. I made a new folder for it called surfacing I2R8. You can label it 4, 6, 8, whichever machine you're using. And then when you label, you're gonna see that it saved it as a mono servicing 1.5 pocket one, but that's because that was the name of one of our tool paths. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you delete pocket one and replace that with surfacing tool path, just so that in the future, if you need to service your machine again, which you very well may and probably should, uh, you won't get confused and think that this tool path is only the pocketing pass or only the profile pass. It's actually both of them. So that looks pretty good. You can add the label of which machine it's for. That's again, just whatever you can do to make it the least confusing. And that's, as you'll see what I have up here. Uh, so then when you're all set with that, just press save. 
and you should be good to go. Next, you're gonna load it into UCCNC, get all the settings correct there, and then we'll be off surfacing our machine. Okay, so now that you have your toolpath, you're going to bring your laptop or whatever your controller is to your machine. When you're doing your machine setup, it's very important that you either have your machine turned off or on reset mode just so that the machine doesn't accidentally turn on while you're touching it. So first things first, you're gonna to need to get the Amana surfacing bit or whatever surfacing bit you are using. Now you can turn on your machine and press home all. That's going to home your machine to the bottom left hand corner. Once the machine is homed, then you're gonna to wanna to press set X0 and Y0. And then in the text box, put X305 and Y610 to jog it to the center of the machine and then again hit 0, X, and Y to set that as a 0. And you'll notice once it's there, it should be lined up with the center dot of your center piece of MDF. If it's not lined up, then you're going to want to do a border check. Using the display function that UCCNC has, jog the machine over to the edges of your project. You're going to want to go along the entire perimeter of your cut and make sure that the MDF is lined up or at least within the boundaries of that cut. Uh, if they're not, you're going to have to untighten all of your MDF and reline it up because otherwise it'll be beyond the machine limits and you can't reach that part of the MDF. You're going to want the MDF about an inch from the edge of your machine. So you can measure an inch, move the MDF down, and then you can right angle everything off using the sides as a reference. Another very important step is the dust collection. Regardless of what you use, just make sure there is some form of dust collection. If you're using the I2R dust shoe, I suggest you attach the top of the dust shoe to the spindle and then with magnets, the bottom piece with the bristles attaches, but just to secure it a little bit more, we like to put zip ties around it so that we know it won't get jostled around during the cut. Another crucial step is you need to make sure all of your MDF is tightened securely. It doesn't have to be ridiculously tight, but it at least has to be double checked to make sure that it's held down and it won't move while the machine is shaving away. With the spindle in the center of the machine, after everything's tightened down, you're going to want to touch off your Z axis. So take the touch probe, put it directly under the bit in the center of the machine and press the Z0 touch off button in UCCNC. All right, and after you have that, just make sure everything's double checked, secured, good to go. You did the touch off, you zeroed everything and you should be good to press cycle start. So while the machine's cutting, just monitor it. You should listen for any chattering. If it's chattering a lot, then that means there might be something wrong with your cut depth. Uh, if the spindle stops for whatever reason, that means that you are pushing it too hard and it has to dial back either the feed or the cut depth or both. Um, if you think that the machine is actually able to do more than what you inputted the first time, you can mess around with the feeds and speeds a little bit in UCCNC, so try upping the feed if you think it can handle it or lowering it if you think it's a little bit too much. And you'll notice there is the lip around the MDF, which is why we had that profiling pass, which is why you have to do a pocketing pass and a profile pass. So now you just let the machine do its thing. And once it's done, you have a perfectly surfaced CNC machine, which will allow your projects to be that much cleaner and that much more accurate in the future. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy your surfaced CNC machine.